Hello and welcome to episode 8 of my podcast, Tom Sips into Conversation With. Uh, this episode is the last of the current season, season 1. I'll be back with a season 2 uh, in a few weeks um, and I'll drop information on my Instagram and a little trailer as well when that's going to drop. This week I'm talking to Fidesz. She is on Instagram as Azramati, um, a very talented crocheter um, and just a really nice human being. Yeah, we recorded this back in uh, January uh, when... We were still in quite the mix of a lockdown and it was a lot colder outside. Before I kind of go on about how my week has been and what I'm going to be doing next, I uh, just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has been on the podcast uh, for season one. Everyone who I recorded, I did it before an episode actually came out. So they all put a bit of trust in me and uh, let me talk to them and record them. And yeah, a massive thank you to everyone who's been on there. I've got some amazing guests for season two lined up and hopefully fingers crossed i might be able to do a season three as well but that depends on how things go with work didn't really do a ton of stuff last week just trying to do a bit of editing um i'm editing the behind the scenes video of historic cooking episode two um which is going to be coming out on saturday the day after this comes out i'm recording this intro at the beginning of the week because um i've got quite a busy week coming up um we are recording Episode 3 of Historic Cooking, where we're looking at World War II kind of era. That's going to be really fun to shoot. Um, picking up the shopping tomorrow, and yeah, I'm going to be doing some cooking and some baking over the next two days. And then I had a message from my work as well, and we're going back in at the end of the week to go in, kind of prep and get things ready to hopefully open the week after, which I believe that's when we're planning on opening, so... Um, really looking forward to getting back into work. Um, a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. It's been quite a while since we've worked. But yeah, those those are kind of my updates at the moment. Gonna try and edit as much as I can in the free time that I have um, for the next episode. Let's talk about episode eight. Fridays from Azramati is an amazing crocheter. So in this conversation, we talk about how we both kind of have a, like a really creative drive to to make stuff, um, and we've just sometimes feel the urge to just create uh, which was really fun we talk about what inspires her um, we talk about pattern writing because that's something uh, that she started doing uh, kind of during lockdown and um, is really enjoying and it's another conversation that I had that kind of inspired me to write my own patterns uh, which you can go and check out on my website we also talk about tattoos and uh, tattooing because um, her partner is a tattooer and uh, she's kind of learned a bit about tattooing. Um, we also talk about dancing um, because she was a avid flamenco dancer. We also talk a bit about uh, what she likes to do when when she's creating, uh, what she likes to listen to and or watch. Uh, we also talk about uh, using uh, recycled yarn and uh, secondhand yarn uh, because that's something that she is very keen on doing and yeah that's she she only uses secondhand yarn so i'll be back uh, at the end of the conversation uh with just a little bit more chat we begin the conversation with me asking how she got into crochet well the basics i learned in school when i was a kid but actually i i just everything about like crafting and stuff I just learned the basics in school and then I went home and tried it and I just loved doing it at home and with my own ideas, not the boring ideas the teachers gave us. But when I grew, I, I just forgot about crochet. So later on, I think it was in 2017 or 18, I um, became very sick and I had to be in bed for a few months. So I just came back to crochet and I didn't really know why or how, but I just started and I, I made a huge, huge mandala blanket, which was mm, very difficult for my level, yeah. but I did it. And it's about like two or two and a half meters big. Wow. And yeah, then I just came back to the idea of creating clothes, which I was always interested in whether it was sewing or knitting or whatever and tried it with crochet which wasn't a success at the first time but yeah it turned out great because I couldn't even like 
put down the crochet hook. I was mm -hmm. just creating and creating and creating until I got something I liked. And yeah, I haven't stopped ever since. So That's awesome. I feel like we work in a similar way. Um, I didn't really get taught properly. I just kind of learned and just picked things up as I went along, mm -hmm. um, which I think is quite fun because especially if you don't have like a deadline or anything and you're just experimenting, you can learn so much through that way. Absolutely. And you can learn through mistakes you are doing. Like no one is telling you, you, you can't do this or you can't do that, but you experience it and you just have to frog it and just have to start all over again. And if you have the passion to, to continue doing it, it's, it's a great way. For me, it's a great way definitely it is i think the same as well and i think it's kind of like it's it's fine like because when you finish a project you're like oh that project's finished but if you have to take it back and keep working on it you get to work on that project three or four times so it makes that project last a little bit longer makes that wall last yeah. a bit longer yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and cool. also the joy that comes with with the growing and stuff yeah yeah and learning new techniques and i mean you've been I think this Instagram's been going for like 2019, so a few years now. Yeah. Did yeah. you? So you you started around back up in 2017. I think a common theme that I've heard is that um, knitting and crochet and stuff like this is a really good like form of meditation. And yeah. Um, I guess if you if you've been unwell and stuff as well, then it's probably like you don't have to get up or anything. Like you can do it in your bed. So yeah. I couldn't, so it was kind of like a need to express my creative soul, which I always had, but back before being very sick, I could go dancing and stuff like that and doing more like physical stuff. Mm. And due to the lack of this possibility, I just had to do it. And I, I don't know, it's just crochet was a little bit more... I. I felt it was easier than knitting <laughs> because it's only one hook. <laughs> yeah, you can two. kind of put it down, can't you? Like it's a lot easier yeah. to just put down and not have to worry about losing your project. Yeah, exactly. So, so you do a bit of knitting as well then? No, I did when I was a kid and maybe once or twice, but it's a, it's a few years ago. And I don't know, I, I just stick to crochet because I liked it and... Also because somebody told me that knitting can be made by machines and crochet can't. So I was like, okay, I will stick to crochet. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know why. I've had a go at crochet and I just, I can't get into it. I, can't, I just can't. I think I would need to spend a bit more time on it. But uh, like, I'm, I'm a happy knitter, to be honest. I'm, I'm fine with just sticking with that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of when you are in that place and you can you just realize you can improve on something. Sometimes I feel like, just personally, I feel like I want to improve this instead of learning many, many more crafts. But yeah, maybe it's just me and my stubborn head. <laughs> I, I Yeah, I do quite like experimenting and trying different things out. But I think, I mean, if if crochet, like, if I felt it working for me, then I, I would have probably stuck with it. But um. Yeah, I'm happy to experiment and keep experimenting with knitting and learning more about that, really. But yeah. yeah. I mean, and your maybe style, later on. <laughs> yeah, maybe later on I'll, I'll give it a go. Yeah. I mean, your style has like grown loads from like the start. Do you, do you like designing your own work? Absolutely. There's nothing I love better, actually. That's yeah. cool. Where do you get your inspiration I, from? Everything I see, actually. <laughs> everything. Even it, it's, it's not only clothing or fashion, it's fabrics and colors and pictures and just sometimes it's just feelings or I just come up with something. I, I'm getting out of bed and I'm like, I have to try this or that. I, I can't help myself and I don't know where exactly it comes from. But of course, I'm very often I'm, I'm inspired by other artists, especially mm. those who are not creating clothing, but other crochet stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know, it, it, it kind of inspires my mind to make something different from the same kind of style, if you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's kind of part of the point of this 
this kind of podcast is that like I know in the UK we're in another lockdown I can't remember if, if is Germany in another lockdown yeah yeah and I know that a lot of people picked up crafts and stuff during the first one and I'm trying to help inspire people to like pick it up because it's just a good way of trying to keep your mind busy or focused away from the horribleness that's going outside and I feel like your page I think I've fairly recently started following you because I, I haven't followed that many crocheters only kind of recently and your I feel like your page has like exploded recently has it or has it yeah yeah, yeah. It's growing quite well, honestly, and it's just because I've been um, staying very consistent with my with my posts, actually. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen like a few kind of like crochet friends who have like shared your your uh, posts and stuff on their stories, and that's where I found you. And oh, okay, that's yeah. Cool. I just I love seeing people's kind of creativity just kind of like explode into like the social media and just like get bigger and more people get to see it which is really fun yeah it's awesome and it's also it's hard work to um create and at the same time um show it to the world because sometimes yeah. i feel like oh i would prefer to crochet actually instead of sitting in front of the computer or mobile and try to figure some posts out and stuff but mm -hmm. I learned especially due to the pandemic I learned that it's worth it and even though I can't go like to festivals to to show my actual stuff and to show my products I I am able to show what I do and even to grow and yeah make yeah. something from it like do you use any apps or anything to like help you um post or do you just do you dr try and post every day I'm trying to post every day. I think a few days ago I started with this app preview. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I just, it's very nice to, to kind of organize some pictures mm -hmm. and you can like drag and drop them. So yeah, you can get a nice overview from the pictures you still have and you can post them like whenever you like. And also you can add some notes like the captions and hashtags, which makes it easier. It definitely makes it e easier because you can pr um, prepare it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I, um, kind of a little plug for me, but I made a little video about an app called Later um, mm -hmm. where you can do that, where you can like schedule in your posts. And if you've got like a, a business account for your Instagram, it will automatically push them as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I find that incredibly helpful because it means you can have like a day or two just focusing about social media and like having like organizing your photos and like make sure you've got like a nice flow to your page that's true yeah. and also we are once we we are in a nice place or somewhere with with nice lightings or a nice natural place we are trying to take as many pictures as possible so i i do have some pictures up my sleeve to to post when we are like in the middle of winter and not having yeah. the best possibilities to take nice pictures yeah yeah and you can't go outside as much because it's a bit damp. yeah 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 exactly um, also because of the lockdown and stuff yeah yeah you said about um markets do you do markets and do you try and sell your stuff obviously not in the world that we're living right now but did you, <laughs> yeah. used, to, did you used to do markets and stuff yes I did festivals and markets and craft markets, or how is it called? Yeah. Yeah. And I loved it. I really loved it to, to let people actually, like, touch the fabrics I create and wear them. And it was beautiful, especially at festivals, because people were very excited about the stuff I made. They just put it on and went partying. And it was so nice to see people wearing my clothes and running <laughs> across the festivals i really loved it but That's i really don't cool. know yeah. when we're coming back to this kind of stuff yeah hopefully pro probably next year but um mm. yeah that's really cool i've because i've done a couple of festivals and it's really nice seeing because I, I mainly do hats and it's really nice seeing people wear my stuff but i i haven't really sold that much but yeah that feeling of seeing someone's face when they've bought something that's yours and you and then later on catching 
like seeing them in the distance wearing your stuff is really cool as well yeah absolutely it's it, it's a good process for me personally because sometimes i feel a little bit of a pain in my heart having to let go of something i made especially because it's all like single pieces yeah and on the other hand it's it's very very good for my creativity and to to start thinking about something new and letting go of of the old designs i just made and enjoying them even though i don't own them anymore like you know what yeah I mean? it's still something that you've created it's, yeah I, n- I know what you mean like you kind of want to hold on to it so you can look at it and like maybe learn from what you've made but then yeah also selling it helps fund the hobby as well yeah yeah do you, Absolutely. Do you crochet full time or do you have a another job? Mm, I do have actually I did have three side hustles, but in this time I only have two side hustles next to crochet. But I'd love to be like only focused on crochet. But at this point I can't. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um that's cool. I, I feel like soon you will be able i mean if lockdown wasn't happening and you were able to like go out to markets more you could probably make a fairly good living from from your work from the looks of it oh that would be just amazing that's everything i'm like wishing for being self-employed only with this because i love it and there's so much more time to put in there and yeah that's cool yeah, it definitely takes away from from the energy I could put into Azramati because of I'm working outside and I have to focus on different things and on making a living and stuff. So yeah, I'm hoping it changes a, a little, and that's also why I started writing patterns to have some extra opportunities when I can't go to to festivals and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I saw that you that you write patterns. It's something that I kind of want to work on myself this year. But um, how do you find the pattern writing process? I don't know. I just wrote, I think, five patterns at this point, and two of them aren't released yet. But the very first patterns were absolutely overwhelming, and I couldn't have done it like any chance without my testers because. I really never worked with patterns before. I've been always creating like freestyle. So I didn't really know how to write the instructions properly. And also Mm -hmm. I wrote them in English, of course, which was extra challenging too. And also like special like stitch combinations and stuff. Yeah, the (laughs) abbreviations. I I always called them this or that. But Mm -hmm. other people are like, oh, no, 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 you don't call them like that. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, yeah, it was like a few difficult things about it. But so many people were asking me like every, every day, please start writing patterns. So in the last summer, I just started to give it a try. And then I decided to make the pattern size inclusive so um, people can just work with their own measurements Mm -hmm. and create patterns on the base of their body shapes because that's really cool yeah yeah Yeah, that's just something i want and yeah it it's an extra difficult piece to it actually yeah i'm growing yeah that's the thing that's really put me off is that i've not like classically trained like i've not learned how to do it like from books and stuff i've just picked it up and just done it so I've I've worked from a few patterns, but not enough to really know how to write them properly. And mm-hmm. like you said, I would love to like try and make it as inclusive as possible. So I think talking to a bunch of people now, I feel like I've got a little bit more confidence to try and make it so the the person knitting it has to do a bit of work and has to do a little bit of maths so that they can make it fit them perfectly rather than like four sizes or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm also very confused, very, very fast by too many abbreviations, or how do you call them? Abbreviations. Abbreviations, yeah. (laughs) And they confuse me all the time. So sometimes I'm like, I just can't figure it out. Even though I 
if I just see it or if I'm just doing it intuitively, it works out well. So it's an extra challenge for me to write these things down, yeah. especially, yeah, sometimes my, my designs are made like very intricately with so many different parts attached to each other and stuff. And later on, you can't even tell which part was which part. And yeah. Yeah. Sounds it, really it, cool. Yeah, it's it's very nice to learn something. How, how big is your team of um, uh, pattern testers? Well, the very first patterns, um, I was just asking specific people I trusted and I knew they have been working with patterns before and um, they just tested the pattern for me. And then I just added like one or two people who just wanted to test my patterns. But for the last two designs, I think, um, also for this sweater, I was doing a big tester call. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just chose the people who were writing me and just went for, for the ones answering my questions or yeah, That's fulfilling cool. like, so I don't know. I was just putting together a huge team for this sweater because I, I just couldn't say no to so many people. And there were so, so many messages. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore, actually. So yeah. I have to think of something that's working because this team for the Swatch is, I think, about 17 people. Wow. And it's huge because there were so many very promising people. And yeah. I just wanted to give it a try. And also some very young people who were like, oh, can I please, please try testing it? And I was like, well, why, why not giving them a chance, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, it's, if it's only me and if it's only for my own preference, I would prefer having a small, smaller team of testers. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just less work, actually. I guess you've also got to try and wait for everyone to finish the projects as well before you, you kind of put it out in the world. I, I, I set a deadline at the very beginning mm -hmm. and um, I asked people only to contact me if they can make it to the deadline and I hope yeah. it works out. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. Looking for, Do you know when, the, when you're hoping to release the new patterns? Yeah, the, the sweater pattern for the Ophelia sweater is going to be released, I think, the 25th of January. Okay. Cool. And then I have another dress, which is going to be released, I think, maybe the 5th or 6th of February. Awesome. So by the time people mm -hmm. see this episode, these patterns will be live. Which of your patterns that you've got so far, if like someone was a beginner or relatively new to crochet, which pattern would you recommend of yours to try out? I think the um, Nuria, skirt Nuria is very well for beginners because you have to measure yourself, but it's only one measurement. And I think it's, it's very well described and also with a lot, a lot of pictures you can use. You just have to know like some basic stitches which are listed above and you can check them out on the internet before or watch YouTube videos and you can do it very well with this one. And also my first and only like tank top design mm -hmm. would work for a beginner very well. And all the other are like for the more like beginners with basic knowledge. Yeah, It's fine for beginners. It's just the measuring that will have to be correct but i added some pictures in it and i think someone who who just knows basics could do it very well what's your kind of favorite project that you've worked on to date i think it must be the one white dress with the very open like neckline it's i think i call it sarasrati it's okay. a white dress with very small like um, how do you call this? Kind of straps. Uh, these, yeah, straps, exactly. Yep. And yep. it's very form-fitting and it could be used as a bridal dress or just a beach dress. And I really like the design. It has some like fringes down at the bottom and I love it. It's my, I think it's one of my favorites, but I love 
most of my designs. Yeah. yeah. I think they're, they're very unique, the stuff that you've created. It's very cool. Thank you. <laughs> I also noticed on your um, about me thing in your stories that you either are or you used to tattoo. Yeah. Do you still tattoo as well? Yes, but only my boyfriend because it's lockdown time. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. usually we go to tattoo conventions almost every weekend and oh. we work there because he's a professional tattoo artist and in the time we spent together I started learning it too because I always had a thing for drawing and so I started tattooing as well and Yes, I like it. It's very nice. I, I do actually have some customers coming to me over and over again um, when it's not COVID, obviously. Yeah. And we are having like some big projects we're working on, like a full sleeve and some wow. stuff like that, which nice. I love. But I, yeah. I don't do it full time and I wouldn't even call myself professional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Because, uh, yeah, I, I saw some of your work. It seems kind of like um, many black and grey, just kind of line work. Um, is it more flowers and nature kind of images? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Flowers and insects and birds. And that's all the stuff I, I like drawing. And so it's the stuff I'm, I'm showing as tattoos as well. That's cool. Yeah. And I think I saw it as well. They used to do, uh, or maybe you still do, flamenco dancing? I did, yeah. I did. But not now. I, yeah. I used to, to dance very, very passionately <laughs> and very, very much. And I, I've been to, to a few competitions <clears throat> in Germany and also in, in international kind of stuff. Like... I've been to the so-called Dance World Cup 2016 or something. Wow. So it's been like almost professionally. Yeah. That's cool. Would you want to still do it or have you kind of retired the dancing shoes? <laughs> I think I would still do it. But where I am right now in Germany, I don't see the, the, the right options for me, actually. Whereabouts in Germany are you? Um, right now I'm in the south, in Stuttgart. Okay. Yeah. But I used to live at other places and also outside of Germany. And I always liked it much better. So I hope there's something new to come. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. Uh, my partner's from Würzburg. So I've oh, only, really? Yeah, I've only been there. Um, we were hoping to like try and go to Berlin at some point And hopefully in the future we will try and go to like Berlin and stuff but obviously can't do any traveling at the moment so and did you like it yeah it's Be beautiful. <laughs> yeah no it is really nice it's it's quite different and there's like a few things that feel like it's kind of set back in time for me like there was like cigarette vending machines which you don't see in England like you haven't seen those for like <laughs> at least 20 years um, <laughs> um but yeah, I, I think it was it was beautiful. There's a lot of churches and stuff in her hometown, so um, like the architecture is just beautiful over there. So okay, yeah. And the times we went, it was like around Christmas time, so there was like just a lovely wintry feeling. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, what do you like to listen to or watch when you're creating? Um, I love podcasts. I love audiobooks. Sometimes I watch Netflix and sometimes YouTube videos mm -hmm. or music or just talking to my partner who is drawing. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It must be quite a creative household that you've, you've got then if your partner's drawing loads and. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And he's also like very creative and making our home very nice with all his like ideas and drawings and pictures and putting them in nice diff different frames and 
just painting frames and stuff. Yeah, it's cool. very nice. Nice. Um, cool. I think we're like pretty much done. Is there anything that you want to promote or is there anything else you want to kind of like highlight or anything? Maybe just my patterns. Like right now there's only three patterns on my website, but there's much, much more to come. And very soon there's going to be five and I do have some more up my sleeve. So just, Amazing. I just love people to, to keep their eyes open for all this stuff that comes because I've been asked so, so, so many times and finally it's, it's coming. And yeah, I also, I would like people to maybe um, have a look at my page considering that all the stuff I'm making is made from secondhand and vintage materials. This is for me personally, a very important point because I just don't want using like any fabrics or yarns that are harming our nature. Yeah. And yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm trying to do. We can talk a bit, a bit about that if you want. Um, <laughs> Cause where do you find these kind of reused materials then um well i used to find them at like secondhand or thrift markets or secondhand shops even mm -hmm. and then also i find them like on secondhand online platforms where people are just selling the the old yarns of their like passed away grandmas for example yeah. and most of the times they are very very beautifully quality like mm -hmm sometimes I have to wash them or take care of them in a special way to, to get them to the condition I'd like them to. But most of the times they are perfectly, like perfectly perfect. And yeah. they are vintage, they are old and they have to be washed and cleaned and stuff. But there's a lot of material already on this planet. So there is options to reuse them. And also if I like, include fabrics in my designs I always use secondhand fabrics and just sew them or change them and yeah that's really cool that's yeah that's probably um something that helps make your pieces a bit more unique is the fact that you're using unique wool and yarn and stuff absolutely yeah that's so true <laughs> and it, it kind of limits me but still it kind of helps me to to create more uniqueness, just like it's a... I yeah. don't know, what kind of yarn are you buying, for example, for, for hats? Um, I use a mixture. For my hats, I like to use um, something from Drops, which is um, an Eskimo wool. It's like quite a thick... It's kind of like a chunky, like actual 100% wool. Um, mm -hmm. Just because it's it's quite... it's It's cheaper, it's a bit more kind of user-friendly like i would like to turn that into a pattern and i think like i've used stuff from one of the gang and it's a really good quality wool but it's very expensive and it's not easy access for a lot of people and mm -hmm. that's what i kind of want to try and do a bit more is trying to find wool and yarn or try and make patterns that more people can do rather than people who have only got a lot of money can try and recreate you know yeah absolutely i understand yeah. it's very it's very expensive actually right yeah to yeah it is good quality yarn yeah I and mean, the quality like playing with the quality of the yarn like the feel of the one the gang stuff i do kind of understand a little bit why it's kind of a premium price but it's also down mm -hmm. to their name i think like their name puts on a much higher price tag um mm -hmm. yeah but okay i've i mean i've used like when i first started i used to get wool from charity shops and just experiment with that as well which was quite fun but it's frustrating if you're trying to make something and you don't have enough of it absolutely yeah yeah absolutely yeah that's why why i started using some like online secondhand platforms um to find like bigger amounts of the same color yarn and i i do succeed every time like Sometimes it's it's just a little more time consuming, but I just take that because it's to me it's worth it. 
it's a little less expensive also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I just don't waste any material or anything, which I which I like. Just yeah. And it's part of your brand as well, isn't it? So it's just it all kind of ties in nice like really nicely. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Uh, a massive thank you for Fides to be on the podcast. Um, that was a really good conversation. I hope that you all really enjoyed it as well. Uh, yet again, uh, just another massive thank you to everyone who's been on season one of the podcast. So as you might have heard at the end of the conversation, um, she had a couple of patterns on a website that were that you could buy. Um, she has released all of the new patterns that she was talking about so she does have five patterns that you can buy and you can crochet yourself um, if you want to go and check those out there's a link down below um, there's also a link to my website where you can check out my patterns and if you want to become a uh, test knitter as well I would I'm really looking for some test knitters for a couple of the projects that I've been working on season two is recorded and I'm currently editing if you are interested in being on an episode on in season three please send me a message if you know someone who you think would be good on the podcast also send me a message um, I'm definitely going to try and fit recording and editing episodes around work because I still think I'm not going to be quite full time for work yet but I'd still want to try and record some before I am back to full time where it's going to be a bit harder Thank you very much for everyone for watching or listening uh, to this first season of the podcast. Um, I can't wait to share with you uh, next season. And yeah, make sure you follow me on Instagram because that's mainly where I share information about the next season of the podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with other people as well. Um, I would love more people to hear the podcast. And yeah, I hope you're all staying safe and I will see you soon with the next season.